Question 2, we're looking at alpha particle scattering. So it says radium 226 decays with the emission of an alpha particle to radon Rn. So we've had this before, so let's, let me just make this a little bit bigger. So we've got our radon there, and it's 86 and, um, ra sorry, radium 222, and it goes to radon plus an alpha particle, and again, remember this is a 2 and a 4. Two protons and two neutrons giving you your 4. So we need to just make sure that we balance this, so this is going to be 86, and this is going to be, this is 226, sorry, this is going to be 222, like that. Um, then it says, on the diagram, draw lines to show the angle of deviation of the alpha particle. Label this angle D. So we need to show this, uh, this um, angle of deviation that we have. Now, um, we've got here, this would be, if there was no deviation, you would have that. It would go in a straight line and this is the new path so we've got that and so your angle of deviation would be like that it's you've obviously got to have drawn in this line to show the angle that it would have moved without deviation to give your angle of deviation relative to that like that then it says the gold nucleus is replaced by another gold nucleus that has a larger nuclear number, so it will therefore have more proton, more neutrons, same number of protons. Suggest and explain the change, if any, in the angle D of the alpha particle with the same energy following the same initial path. Well, there will be no change. And why not? Because this deviation is caused by the positive positive repulsion and because you have got um, the same gold nucleus you've got the same atomic number or the same number of positive positive charges and therefore the force the force that's been exerted on this alpha particle by the gold nucleus is going to be the same because remember your force is given by k q1 q2 over r squared that's still going to be the same and therefore you're going to have because you've got the same um, initial velocity and this this alpha particle has got the same mass uh, there will be no there will be no significant deviation this will have a greater mass but the force due to gravity is so small, that won't make any difference at all. Going into this question over here, there's some quite nice questions here. So, the diagram shows the initial path of an alpha particle that approaches the gold nucleus along the line joining the centers. On the diagram, draw the subsequent path of the alpha particle. So, you would you would have something like this. It would come like this, and then it would come back like that. Would have a uh, returning along the original path, basically. So, I haven't made it exact. It would be better to show it like that and then to show that there is returning along the same path and you could just maybe add that in returning along the same path now it doesn't actually reach this it doesn't it may get very close but won't won't actually reach that then we're looking at nuclear processes it says the main nuclear process that gives rise to energy emission from the sun is simplified in this form over here so you have four hydrogen atoms they fuse together to form helium plus energy this is fusion nuclear fusion nuclear fusion is the uh, name for this for this process then it says the total mass of the four hydrogen atoms is this and the mass of the helium is that show that the energy released is that so we're going to use our formula E is equal to mc squared 
we're going to find the mass difference. Now the mass difference uh, is is going to be um, given by this. It's going to be the four nu uh, four hydrogen nuclei is six point six nine three times ten to the negative twenty seven, and we're going to minus that. We're going to minus the six point six four five times ten to the negative twenty seven, and we get that we get four point eight around 4.8 times 10 to the negative 29 kilograms. Now that would all be converted into energy according to our formula E is equal to mc squared. So we multiply this. The E would be that times 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. And from that we get our 4.3 times 10 to the negative 12 uh, joules. Finally, this question over here, question 3 of D. It says, the sun has a radius of 7 times 10 to the 8 meters and emits energy at the rate of 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. So it's 3.9 times 10 to the 26 joules per second. It's emitting energy. The nuclear reactions that take place in the spherical core of the Sun of a radius of 0.25 are. Use these data and the answer in D in D2 to determine the number of nuclear reactions occurring per cubic meter per second in the core of the Sun. So we have got from here, we have got that every nuclear reaction is giving 4.3 times 10 to the negative 12 joules and we need this amount of energy per second so if I divide this the 3.9 times 10 to the 26 joules per second and I divide this by 4.3 times 10 to the minus 12 joules I'm going to get from that I get something like this 9.03 times 10 to the 37 and that's going to be the number of reactions per second. That's how many I will get per second. And that will all take place if this is the sun of R. It's all taking place in that center here, center portion, um, which is equal to a quarter R. 0.25 r. Now we need it, we are looking at per cubic meter, so I must actually find the volume of this. Now the volume of a sphere, you actually need to know this, it's 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So I need to find the volume of that, then I can divide this by that volume. Um, and when we do that, so we're going to get, um, so the number of reactions per second uh, per meter cubed would equal this over here 9.03 times 10 to the 37 divided by all right so we're going to get 4 over 3 pi and then we're going to get 0 0.25 times 7 times 10 to the 8 and that's going to be cubed and You've got to make sure that when you do this in your calculator, I would probably do this section over here first and then just divide this by my answer. Um, and you get there about 4.0 times 10 to the 12 uh, reactions per second per meter cubed. So that's per meter cubed per second.